All right, so you see this here probiotic? This one's a lot of crap, but this one's gonna change the freaking world. All right, so this video is gonna contain four main parts. What is a probiotic and our gut health? Then some of the benefits that we can get. We're gonna debunk some myths. And finally, we're gonna give some advice so we can improve our gut health. Like always, all of these timestamps are down below in the description, so feel free to jump around in this video. And by the way, all of the information from this video is synthesized from Rich Roll's podcast episode with the founders of Seed, Raja and Ara. So if you wanna see the full interview, it's linked down below. And if you're new here, my name is Mike, a biohacking nerd that's currently based in Poland. And on this channel, we explore how to become the healthiest versions of ourselves. And before we jump right in, I noticed that only a small percentage of people that actually watch my videos are subscribed. So consider doing that down below. It's completely free and you can unsubscribe at any time. All right, let's jump right in. Firstly, let's cover what a probiotic really is. The majority of us have probably heard the term because it's fricking plastered on everything. Yogurt, moisturizers, you name it. And why is that the case? Because the term probiotic is not regulated at all by the FDA, meaning that literally anything can be a probiotic. So marketing teams go in there and use this as a huge buzzword to convince you and me, but there's no really scientific claims behind it. You see this coin right here? it's got freaking probiotic effects too. Yeah, literally anything can be a probiotic and have benefits on you. Wait, Mike, so what's actually a probiotic? Well, the most concrete definition at the moment is a live organism that has probiotic benefits on the host. And those claims are tested on a human population in a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial. All right, so now let's say we've got this amazing probiotic that has been tested and is gonna do awesome stuff for us. We start taking it, the probiotic jumps in and starts doing its work. It's now going to start supporting our microbiome, which is a collection of microbes that live on every surface of our body, inside and outside. However, we have to keep in mind that probiotics are on a freaking mission. They go in, they do their work, usually in the gut. That's where the whole term gut health comes into play, and then they get the heck out. And the reason we're targeting the gut specifically is it contains the densest microbial community throughout our entire body. With this idea said, the whole goal of gut health is twofold. The first one being we want to modify our microbiome to create a more favorable state for us. For example, improved digestion. And two, we want to ensure that our body tissues, for example, our gut lining, is able to do its job correctly. So that's absorbing the nutrients that we want and keeping out viruses. All right, so now that we're all on the same page and we got our definitions in check, let's figure out how microbes, specifically probiotics, can help us, good old humans, and also things like the environment. All right, so let's start with us first, humans. So first, it can help with digestion problems. If you're like me and you've had crappy digestion your entire life, this is huge. And products like Seed Probiotic can really come in and help this. It's actually been shown to improve the five main areas of digestive health, and I'll spare you from hearing me say them all out loud. I'll just throw them up on the screen. Next, we've got the thing that everyone freaking hates, diseases. These aren't really available at the moment, um, just because there's not really any solid research that has been done on specific probiotic strains, so stay tuned for these ones. But they're really trying to support in three main areas. The first one is going to be heart disease, so allowing the probiotics to better help our body manage cholesterol. The second one is gonna be metabolic syndrome, in this case, specifically type two diabetes. 
and the third one will be obesity. And we know that that's linked with the microbiome because of a study that happened in 2006 where they took the microbiome of an obese mouse and put it into a lean mouse and vice versa. And their profiles completely changed. It was pretty fascinating from what I've been told. And last but not least, we have allergies. This one really hits home for my family just cause my brother has had a deathly allergic peanut and nut allergy his entire life. So knowing the probiotics can come in and support him in one way or another is freaking awesome. I can only imagine how people with allergies are feeling about this whole idea. So hopefully this has got you all pretty excited, but the application of probiotics is actually even larger than that. It can also help the environment. So let's talk about crops and farming first. So the idea here is to modulate the soil in specific areas to improve the diversity of microbes, to improve nutrient uptake and nutrient density, and also do things like modify the microbes in certain areas so that specific crops can thrive. This would be based on things like earlier rooting, thicker stems, and higher fruit yields. And the whole goal with this is very similar to what Elon Musk did with electric cars. It's to get it to mass market and make sure it's at cost or even lower than pesticides. The next big area of improvement is bee colonies. A lot of people are probably just like, yo, I don't like bees. They sting me, they can die. The thing is, they are the most efficient pollinizers that we will ever have. And without them, we lose almost every blooming crop. To paint a picture for you, imagine going to your local grocery store and seeing them stock 90% less fruits and vegetables. Yeah, I'm not down for that. And finally, there was brief mentions of how it can improve our ability to purify water and also create more sustainable materials. Now let's tighten up any loose ends and debunk the tons and tons of myths that exist out there. And since there's a boatload of stuff to cover, let's do this section rapid fire style. Humans are sentient beings and in full control of their bodies. Yeah, turns out that ain't the case at all. Microbes can affect your emotional health, brain function, propensity for disease, and even specific food cravings. Wait, so you're telling me the reason I crave chocolate sometimes is because the evil microbes are telling me to do it? Yeah, more or less. See, and this is because humans are actually made up of about 10 trillion cells. Well, that's actually nothing compared to how many microbes are on our body, because there's 10 times as many of them, meaning that we're more microbe than human. Yeah, scary, eh? So as much as you wanna keep neglecting this relationship, it's actually extremely important, and it's a symbiotic relationship, meaning you both will benefit from it. I take care of my microbiome by taking care of my gut, obviously. It's called gut health for a reason. Well, if you remember section one, we actually mentioned how microbes are living on every surface of your body, inside and outside, meaning that the moisturizers and things that you put on your skin are also affecting your microbiome, so be mindful of that. Probiotics are restoring the bacteria that is missing from my body. Nope, they were never there in the first place. They're just going into your body, doing their work, usually in the gut and based on their strain, and then getting the heck out. That's why long-term consistency over time is extremely important in this case. If you take probiotics, your gut health is good to go. That's actually the furthest thing from the truth. Taking probiotics is like saying that you take supplements. Which one? Do you take D3 or omega-3? They do extremely different things to the body. To make it simpler, think of it like this. A species is going to be a dog, and a strain is going to be a Siberian Husky. The same species with different strains are going to have different effects on your body. Probiotics with higher CFUs, meaning active bacteria, are better probiotics. So by throwing a ton of bacteria in, you're just kind of praying to God that a couple of them will help you out. But you're not really doing any of the tests there. You could have a ton of bacteria that 
basically are doing more or less nothing. So instead, you wanna be getting stuff that has been tested, and there's been a lot of successful probiotics that just use a couple strains. The cleaner you are, the healthier you become. Once again, the complete opposite. We should actually be focused on being dirtier, considering all the habits that we've built up over our lives to try to keep ourselves as clean as heck. You might be thinking, why is that the case? Well, as we get cleaner, the diversity of microbes living in our microbiome becomes less and less over time. Here's a prime example if you don't believe me. Let's look at the Amish microbiome, the sexiest one on the market at the moment. These guys don't freaking get sick, don't have degenerative chronic diseases, and not to mention, don't have allergies. They must be doing something right. And it's purely because they have daily interactions with the soil and farm animals. And that's because the densest microbial communities live in our gut and in the soil. And what makes it worse is we're destroying both of them our guts with hand sanitizer culture, and the soil with bad agriculture practices. And an interesting thing to note here is what you might have noticed, especially from following a bunch of other biohackers as well, is we're moving backwards in time relative to health. We're trying to figure out how to live more like our ancestors have done because they definitely were doing something correct. The goal is to obtain the optimal microbiome. Well, this doesn't really exist. Instead, it's a bunch of different compositions that have various factors that show that they're more favorable. For example, a diversity of microbes. A product that takes my results and then gives me unique recommendations on an app about how to improve my microbiome. So this doesn't exist yet, and the closest thing we have to this is gonna be Viome. Hopefully this is coming soon as we get a lot more better probiotics on the market. This is super exciting and I can't wait for it to come out. And like always, none of the stuff that I share is medical advice. So please advise your doctor before making any decisions. Finally, we've got the most valuable section and this is oriented so we can start improving our gut health starting today. To do this, I'm gonna run through a list of 10 things that Ara and Raja recommended. One, eating at least 30 different fruits and veggies every week. Two, getting a good night's sleep every single night. Three, avoiding crowded places. Four, going out in nature and getting dirty. Five, staying dirty for longer. So showering less because the main enemy is soap. So a way you can do this is actually by stopping to wash your hair every single day. So you can do it once a week or once a month. That's the one I'm opting for, and you'll see that in an experiment coming soon. Six, avoiding alcohol and sugar because it rips up your gut barrier. Seven, avoiding excessive antibiotic use. Eight, stop using over-the-counter medicines so casually. So say for example, you have a headache and you just decide to go take a Tylenol. Nine, get a dog. 10, this one comes from Raja and is quite spicy. For all the men out there, be mindful of who you're having unprotected sexual intercourse with. The vaginal microbiome could have possible disruptions on your body. And last but not least, this is gonna be a huge tip for all the parents out there or any future parents. We wanna make sure that during the early stages of life, we're really doing three main things because this microbiome becomes the microbiome that you have for the majority of your life. First is ensuring that your son or daughter comes from a vaginal birth. The fluids that come from this event are extremely beneficial and oftentimes babies are cleaned up as soon as possible, which is not ideal. Second is breastfeeding. There's actually gonna be microbial transfer from the mother's nipple, specifically on the areola. Also, there's strong evidence to suggest that breast milk is not sterile and that you get microbial benefits from breast milk itself. And thirdly, not using antibiotics within a six month range of being born. This is huge because antibiotics come in and basically kill everything, the good and the bad. However, we wanna keep in mind that antibiotics have been revolutionary for overall life extension of the human race. If you have an infection, take antibiotics. So if you're interested to start using probiotics, this is what I would recommend. And it's exactly what I'm starting to do. 
Start using Seed Probiotic. They are one of the only companies that are actually going in to do scientific research on their specific strains for the claim that is being made. A lot of other biohackers have highly recommended this company as well. So I'd personally say give it a try and I'm personally gonna be using it for a six to 12 month window to see if I get any beneficial effects, especially for my digestion, just cause I have flatulence every once in a while, some bloating and not always the best stool consistency. So hopefully it can help with that regard. And sorry if that was too much information. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you're interested in more content like this, be sure to check out my video here on Vivo Barefoots and how they can help improve the way you walk and reduce pain throughout your body. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.